Chapter 11, Individuals and Families of Asian Descent. Asian Americans represent three broad yet distinct groups. We have eight East Asians from China, Taiwan, Japan, Philippines, and Korea. We have South Asians from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Bhutan, and the Maldives. And we have Southeast Asians from Vietnam, Laos, hmm, Cambodia, Thailand, and Myanmar, formerly Burma. 5.2% of the U.S. population, or 16.1 million people, are Asian American. We have an additional 1.7 million people, or 0.6% of the U.S. population, that are Asian in combination with one or more other races. Um, and we see a growth rate between the year 2000 and 2010 of 43.3%. So this is one of the fastest growing racial and ethnic communities. The U.S. Census Bureau estimates that by 2050, um, Asian Americans will increase by over 200% and constitute 8% of the U.S. population. There was a large-scale arrival of Chinese laborers on Hawaiian sugar plantations and gold mines of California in the mid-1800s. This was the start of immigration among Asian ethnic groups. Chinatowns began to develop because Chinese Americans were restricted from living among whites, owning land, buying property, intermarrying with whites or obtaining education. Um, early Asian American immigrants were perceived as economic and social threats. Um, and this is where we saw a lot of anti-Asian violence. This was very common. So the anti-Chinese riots at Rock Springs, Wyoming in 1885 resulted in 43 casualties. The armed expulsion of 100 Asian Indian laborers from Live Oak, California in 1908 the armed expulsion of over 100 Japanese farm workers from Turlock, California in 1921, and the anti-Filipino riots of 1930 in Watsonville, California. So those are some pretty big um, events there. Institutional and legislation, legislative forms of discrimination have also been enacted against Asian American communities. So we have the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. This was the first ethnic-specific ban of its kind. We have the Gentlemen's Agreement of 1907, which restricted Japanese immigration. The Immigration Act of 1917, which restricted Asian Indian immigration. The Tidings McDuffie Act of 1934, which restricted Filipino immigration. And the height of this institutional discrimination was in 1942, when there was 120,000 Japanese Americans, 62% of whom were U.S. citizens. Um, that were incarcerated in remote internment camps. Um, in 1965, we did have the Immigration and Nationality Act, and this based immigration on family reunification rather than national origin quotas, and this resulted in an 800% increase in the number of Asian immigrants since 1970. Um, in, contrast to the, in contrast to this influx of voluntary immigrants, um, we saw that Southeast Asian refugees after the 1975 fall of South Vietnam were forced to flee their countries. So they flee due to enduring starvation, overcrowded conditions, disease, death in both free education camps and refugee camps, and the loss of homes and forced resettlement. Um, in the 1960s, we saw that Japanese, Chinese, and Filipino student activists started to informally use this term Asian American um, and it was a, a way of recognizing commonalities and shared history of oppression between different Asian groups. So just like with the African-American terminology um, coming about, this idea of different identities kind of coming together. So their Asian identity and their American identity. Asian Americans continue to encounter contemporary forms of institutional racism. Um, and this includes English-only language initiatives, income to education disparities, glass ceiling effects in career advancement, um, and the underrepresentation in administrative and managerial positions. So Asian Americans also continue to experience individual racism, uh, differential treatment, verbal insults and racial slurs, physical harassment, vandalism, and homicide. Um, of particular relevance to relevance, to contemporary Asian Americans, we have stereotypes of the perpetual foreigner and model minority. 
Um, so despite the repeal of anti-naturalization laws that explicitly prohibited them from becoming citizens, Asian Americans do continue to be implicitly regarded as illegitimate Americans, regardless of nativity um, or citizenship. So the model minority myth, the idea here is that it describes and elevates the status of Asian Americans as a model community that has overcome its minority status. So we see that as well. We also see high academic achievement, high family incomes, low mental health utilization rates, and low delinquency rates. And this, these are seen as indicators of the community's success, um, yet that's a stereotype as well. Um, and this can have negative effects on Asian Americans' physical and psychological well-being. So, for instance, the stereotype that Asians are good at math can be associated with negative emotions on part of Asian American participants in math activities. Um, it also minimizes an individual's effort and achievement um, and generalizes characteristics of a group to individuals to whom they may not apply. So some individuals may feel that they're not meeting the expectation if they're not good enough at math, that kind of thing. Um, Latino and African American students identify authority figures as perpetuators of discrimination. Sorry, perpetrators of discrimination. Asian American youths face a higher level of racial discrimination from peers. So research does indicate that Asian American adolescents um, experience more peer discrimination and perceive more um, being stereotyped more and experiencing more discrimination in general. They perceive it more. So there's more um, negative effects due to that perception and their peer relations. The clustering of Asian Americans as a racial group obscures the ethnic differences of this community. Um, so we, I saw, you know, we saw in the first slide, there's a wide range of um, backgrounds for Asian individuals, Asian Americans, and because they tend to be grouped together, that makes things um, kind of obscured. So counselors may inadvertently generalize their knowledge of Asian American communities. Um, there are approximately 43 distinct Asian ethnic groups that come from 20 different countries of origin. So Asian Americans are also diverse in terms of immigration histories. Within group ethnic differences and immigration should also be noted. Immigration patterns may have a significant implication for your client's understanding of and adaptation to the U.S. cultural norms. So we talked about this model minority um, status. So model minority assumptions about Asian Americans can lead to the belief um, of universal economic and academic success of Asian Americans, which can lead to issues of poverty and educational inequalities um, becoming nearly in invisible within these communities. So it's something to keep in mind. They may fall through the cracks because everyone has these stereotypes. Um, there's a high median income of Asian Americans, which leads to statistics failing to account for larger numbers of wage earners in Asian American households, concentration of Asian Americans in high cost urban areas, and disparities in ratio of income to education level. So once again, people kind of um, falling through the cracks and getting mixed up in the, the mixing of everything, if that makes sense. Um, although Asian Americans on the whole have higher median family incomes than white Americans, their poverty rate is actually higher than that of white Americans. So once again, this stereotype is causing these issues to go unnoticed. So although there is much diversity, Asian Americans are also influenced by some common values, um, ideologies and philosophies that guide their lives and perspectives. So we see this within um, most all subgroups. While there's a ton of within group diversity, there are also shared values um, to keep in mind. So the extent to which Asian Americans adhere to these values is influenced by generational status, immigration histories, and acculturation levels. So to prevent making generalizations, counselors should increase their knowledge of complexities of and distinctions within the Asian American culture. So just like with every other group, we want to check our biases, right? Okay, 
So family or kinship refers to an extended network of relationships that encompasses several households. Uh, multiple generations and caretakers may reside in the family and may influence decisions. So family is considered of primary importance and family needs often override the individual needs. So that's something to keep in mind with your clients. Filial piety, which is an abstract concept, prescribes the way children need to show respect and obedience towards their parents, elders, and ancestors. Um, here there's an obligation, respect, and a strong sense of duty to the parents and elders. Um, there's a strong allegiance to parents that can continue after adult offspring, especially the male offspring, are married. And it's common for adult children to reside with parents until and even after marriage and for married sons to take care of parents in old age. Parenting tends to be authoritarian and directive, and the family structure is typically patriarchal. So children are taught to be responsible for actions and to control emotions, as well as to respect their elders. Actions that benefit the family are praised, whereas guilt-inducing techniques like withdrawal or family support, that kind of thing, are often used as a means of enforcing discipline and maintaining family cohesion. Um, qualitative analyses um, show that among academically high achieving adolescents, immigrant Chinese parents with psychologically distressed offspring applied rigid parenting behaviors that reflected those traditional Asian values of high parental authority and hierarchy, um, emphasize academic achievement, and use non-open communication, resulting in poor parent-offspring cohesion and high levels of intergenerational conflict. Um, counselors should consider family dynamics and other related factors such as individual and family immigration history, adaptation experiences, cultural values, and generational differences due to differences in acculturation experiences. Okay, so gender roles. Gender roles and responsibilities are clearly prescribed and based on one's authority and status in the family and social hierarchy. So for example, age is valued and elders are accorded great respect and importance. Respect is implicit in obedience, formality, and social restraint in relationships with elders. It's important to note that within group differences do exist. We've said that over and over again. Um, Japanese Americans tend to be more acculturated and hence more egalitarian in roles. Filipino Americans also tend to be more egalitarian. Chinese Americans, Koreans, and Southeast Asians tend to be more patriarchal and traditional in orientation. South Asians have been noted to be traditional in homes, but contemporary in relation to education and achievement-related issues. Um, stereotyped images of Asian women as being subservient, passive, innocent, and as male-ordered brides has led to the sexual exploitation and object objectification of these women. Um, also, Asian men are often stereotyped as being nerdy or geeky, feminine, industrious, passive, and asexual. Uh, men and women must negotiate these competing cultural representations of masculinity and femininity as they manage their own gender identity. So it just makes things even more complicated. Um, immigration has created role reversals for some Asian immigrants, which significantly influences their family roles and expectations. So that's something interesting to keep in mind as well. So difficulties in occupational mobility for some foreign-born Asian men has actually led to more women working outside of the family. Um, interpersonal relationships. So among Asian Americans, maintaining harmony governs interpersonal relationships. So being non-directive, non-confrontational, and silent are considered virtues. Um, and moderation in behaviors is valued through self-restraint and self-control. Um, so, for instance, displaying strong emotions is often seen as a sign of immaturity, and humility in deeds and actions is seen as maintaining respect and dignity in relationships. So, intimacy and marriage. Um, Asian American youth are traditionally not encouraged to date. Um, dating and sexuality are intimately linked, and parents often fear that there will be negative repercussions related to dating. 
Uh, parents and extended family do play an important role in choosing a mate for their children through social networks. Uh, once again, this is all um, just research. It's not something to be generalized to your clients. Keep that in mind. Um, parents, let's see. Um, arranged or semi-arranged marriages are common practice among South Asian communities, but marriage based on love and mutual compatibility has increasingly become a norm for Asian American youth. Asian Americans traditionally tend to be modest regarding their sexuality and non-demonstrative in their sexual and physical affection. Divorce and interracial marriages are traditionally not common among Asian Americans, um, so less than 10% compared to 19% of the total population are likely to be separated, widowed, or divorced. Japanese Americans in particular have the highest rates of divorce and recent significant increases of so 31% in interracial marriages for Asian Americans have occurred. Um, gender and generational differences among Asians who marry interracially. So in 1990, we had 25% of Asian women born and raised in the U.S. married white men, and in 2006, we saw that 41% of Asian women married white men, and in 2006, we also saw that only 30% of Asian men born in the U.S. married white women. Education. So Asian American adolescents had higher educational and professional career expectations in comparison to other groups. Academic achievement and a successful career are highly valued and indicative of a good family upbringing. Um, there is pressure to spend time studying at expense of other curricular activities and pressure to obtain certain jobs. So for instance, those science related or technical type jobs. Um, relative functionalism is in response to perceived restrictions and limitations due to discrimination Asian Americans place a higher value on education as the most viable means of upward mobility. The majority of Asian communities believe in fate, rebirth, and an afterlife. So pain and pleasure are seen as a natural part of one's existence. These religious philosophies influence perspectives on life, health, and illness. In many of these communities, places of worship, so like churches, mosques, temples, monasteries, and religious figures such as the priest or minister in Christianity, the mullah or imam in Islam, the pundit in Hinduism, or a monk in Buddhism may be key sources of support during times of difficulties. Um, depending on the geographical region, different religious teachings serve as important spiritual philosophies guiding Asian American lives. So for East Asian Americans, we see um, Confucianism, Buddhism, and Christianity. For Filipinos, we see Catholicism, Japanese Americans, Buddhism, Christianity, and Shintoism. South Asian, primarily Hinduism. India and other regions of South Asia, we see Islam, Sikhism, Jainism. Um, we see in the Cambodians and Laotians, Hinduism and Buddhism, and Vietnam, Buddhism and Catholicism. Um, and then the Mian and Hmong, we see a belief in supernatural powers. So we see some differences there. Um, expressions of grief and death rituals also vary by ethnicity and religion. So death is a communal affair among several Asian groups. Um, this is something to keep in mind because death does occur and it may occur within the families of your clients. So burials and cremation ceremonies are traditionally performed by the males in the family, and elders are often consulted in performing rites. So among the Hmong, we see a belief that proper burial and ancestral worship influence the health, safety, and prosperity of the family. With Buddhists, we see that the belief that a proper burial ritual and state of mind of the dying person can influence the rebirth process. Hindus, cremations, and other death rituals are designed to assist with rebirth and release of the soul from its earthly existence. And Muslims' burials are crucial to the Islamic belief in the physical resurrection of the dead. There are multiple ways in which aspects of, of diversity, so like immigration, ethnicity, race, gender, shape, socialization processes, identity development, and 
interactions for Asian Americans. So Asian Americans identities are multidimensional, just like everyone else's identities, and they must be examined through interrelated axes of the different contexts. So this is that intersectionality that we've brought up every single chapter. We have lots of different subgroups that we belong to. So Asian Americans also belong to lots of different subgroups, different races, different genders, different sexual orientations. Um, factors that mediate Asian American adaptation to U.S. society include the nature and reason for immigration. So we talked about earlier, some people might be leaving due to um, having a war in their country, um, due to starvation, due to various reasons. Um, it might not be voluntary, it might be involuntary. Um, the age of immigration, language abilities, past and present exposure to Western cultures, immigration status, socioeconomic status, professional status, ethnic pride, and the length of stay in the United States. Um, so emigrational status is important, an important determinant of nature, of transition, and adjustment that individuals make in moving to a new environment. It's important to distinguish immigrants from refugees. So immigrants are foreign-born individuals who leave their countries on a voluntary basis. So they've moved to a new country for economic opportunities, upward mobility, they're free to return or to visit their countries without legal restrictions. Um, immigrants may come to the U.S. for short periods of time or on a permanent basis. Refugees, on the other hand, are foreign-born individuals who were involuntarily displaced from their countries of origin. So they are often forced to leave countries due to political unrest, human rights violations, or other chaotic situations. Um, they might also be in exile from their lands and they're un unable to return. So in order to facilitate success, Asian Americans may selectively adapt to certain U.S. cultural norms. So like English proficiency, career goals, dress, that kind of thing, while also holding on to fundamental ethnic cultural values related to family relations, religion, and intimate relations. So kind of um, having this balance here, right? Bicultural influence. Um, so because of bicultural influence, which if you remember is like combining the two cultures, right? American culture and Asian culture. Um, so because of this, Asian Americans internalize two cultures that inform and influence their lives. Um, so ethnic identity may function differently for foreign-born Asians versus U.S.-born Asian Americans. Um, the research shows that there's a strong attachment and sense of belonging to one's cultural roots and traditions. Um, there's typically a more positive psychological outcome. Um, identifying with an American identity and being seen as American provides Asian Americans with a sense of belonging, a sense of legitimacy, and cultural competence. Um, this increases their ability to navigate interactions effectively and to access resources. So cultural frame switching. This is when different aspects of identity may be activated based on different contexts. So if you remember um, like Psych 102, 101, high um, monitors, so self-monitoring, that's how much you change the way you act depending on your environment where you are. So you could be like a chameleon, a very high self-monitor, or you could be very low self-monitor. You're going to do whatever you would do naturally um, regardless of where you are. So this cultural frame switching kind of makes me think of that, if that helps you understand it better. Um, so despite a long history of racism and discrimination, varying views of acceptance from within and outside this community occur. Uh, factors that mask the negative effects of discrimination on Asian Americans include the model minority myth that we talked about earlier, that tendency to dichotomize racism as a black-white issue, the lack of racial socialization and the lack of and the language to speak to these issues among new immigrants, related racial politics of success and economics. Um, and then there's also been a greater attention to an awareness of racism within this community due to discrimination of reports of increased anti-Asian sentiment since 9-11. And I would say that this is probably um, kind of reoccurring now with uh, COVID-19. 
Asian Americans experience racial microaggressions in the form of micro assault. So this would be like racial slurs such as chinks, fresh off the boats, that kind of thing. Um, in the form of micro insults, that would be assumptions that Asian Americans may not be good managers. Um, and then micro invalidation. So Asian Americans are complimented for speaking good English, even though they were born in the United States, that kind of thing. Um, these forms of discriminatory acts relegate Asian Americans to a perpetual foreigner status, despite several generations having grown up in this country. Um, and this can become internalized, these discriminations within Asian Americans. Sexuality and sexual identity. Historically, Asian cultures have depicted their attitudes and openness to sexual issues through the arts, literature, religion, history, and philosophy, with sexual themes covering a range of orientations. However, because of political, social, and religious influences, Asian cultural norms have become more restrictive and place a strong emphasis on silence surrounding issues of sexuality. So Asian Americans perceive homosexuality as more of a Western concept, and it has been seen as a white disease. Um, it's often viewed as a white disease and therefore not a natural part of Asian society. As Asian American sexual minority development develop identity, uh, pressures, to, pressures related to marriage and fear of familial rejection may be a major hindrance in the ownership of identity in the coming out process. So that's something to really keep in mind with your Asian American clients who may be LGBTQ. Um, research on counseling Asian Americans has generally used two approaches. So we have the epidemiological studies, which attempt to be representative of a particular population at large. And then we have more small scale studies, which often use smaller convenient samples, uh, which if you think of convenient sampling, you know, it's convenient. So pretty much all um, doctoral dissertations are use convenient sampling because they go around to their um, like psych psychology classes, that kind of thing, and just uh, conveniently get uh, undergrad students, right? That's probably why a lot of studies are like that, because most of them are probably dis dissertations. Anyways, so research is hampered by relatively small samples of Asian Americans and aggregation of Asian Americans across ethnic groups, which I've seen that as well. Um, so if you're looking at convenience sampling, um, for instance, Louisiana Tech University, you're going to have a very, very small percentage of your um, population that is Asian American, right? Like very, very small. So only a couple. I think I had like two out of 2,000. So you tend to see not a lot of research here is what I'm getting at. Um, a few epidemiological studies, such as the Chinese American Psychiatric Epi Epidemiological Study and the Filipino American Community epidemiological study have provided valuable insight. So that's awesome that we have these huge large scale studies out there. We also have the National Latino and Asian American Study, which is the most comprehensive study of Latino and Asian American mental health so far. Um, findings provide insight on racism and its relationship to psychological distress, including depression, PTSD, domestic violence, anxiety, and schizophrenia. So racism has adverse impact on mental health, health in health-related behaviors, including self-esteem, depression, race-related stress, drug use, body image issues, HIV risk factors, PTSD, and chronic health concerns. So perceived discrimination has led to an increase in suicide attempts, ideation, suicidal ideation, um, increased likelihood of mental disorders, chronic health conditions like chronic pain, cardiovascular disease, and respiratory disease, and an underutilization of health and mental health care. Foreign-born tend to experience more racial discrimination than U.S.-born, so that's something else to keep in mind as well. Um, so there's mixed research on depression rates within Asian Americans. Um, in contrast to earlier studies, a meta-analysis indicates that depression rates of um, Asian Americans may be higher than that of the general population. So various studies with Asian Americans provide conflicting results and with in-group differences are vast regarding the prevalence of depression. So elderly Asian Americans appear to be at the greatest risk for depression with rates as high as 40%.
Um, immigration appears to be an important factor for mental health. For U.S. born Chinese Americans, the lifetime prevalence rates of depressive disorders and suicidal ideation are much higher compared with China born immigrants. Individuals who immigrated as children are more likely to have psychiatric disorders than individuals who immigrated later in life. Uh, Pre-migration traumas, particularly among Southeast Asian refugees, have been consistently associated with PTSD, suicide, and depression. So a, studi a study found that Cambodian refugees, 62% um, suffered from PTSD and 51% had major depression in the previous year. 99% um, of participants had experienced near-death starvation, 90% had a family or fr friend murdered, and 54% were tortured prior to coming to the United States. The effects of trauma can be multi-generational and can persist over time. So another study found that two decades after resettlement in the United States, 62% of Cambodian partic refugee participants continued to exhibit PTSD symptoms. Um, determining prevalence of domestic violence among Asian Americans has been hampered once again by that limited research. So the NLAAS found relatively lower rates of intimate partner violence among Asian American men, so 11.9%, and women, 10.1%, compared to national rates. Um, which have men at 18.4% and women at 17.4%. However, Asian and Pacific Islander Institute on Domestic Violence actually indicates that there may be higher rates of um, that intimate partner violence compared to national rates. So they estimate 41% to 61% of women who are Asian American have experienced um, intimate partner violence. Community-based studies of domestic violence among Asian American women has rates ranging from 24 to 60%. So we see kind of these broad um, numbers here. Rates among Asian Americans may be underreported due to cultural values and um, cultural values around self-disclosure. So kind of what happens in the family stays in the family. And we talked about that earlier. Silence around domestic violence may be perpetuated by cultural values such as the need to maintain group harmony and save face, as well as by tactics such as social isolation and threats to women's reputations and immigration status. Fewer studies have been conducted on the prevalence of anxiety disorders and schizophrenia, um, and the research there is mixed. So earlier research consistently suggests that these disorders occur at lower rates than or similar to rates as whites. Um, but more research, research recent research studies suggest higher social um, compared to people of Western heritage, <clears throat> higher rates. Okay, help seeking and coping. So help seeking may be influenced by Asian values and worldviews. Asian Americans underutilize mental health services overall. So only 8.6% of Asian Americans with psychological problems sought any form of professional help compared to 17.9% of the gener general population. Um, Asian Americans in general are less likely than the general population to seek professional mental health providers. When Asian Americans do seek help, they tend to terminate psychotherapy prematurely. Um, U.S.-born Asian Americans are more likely to see a mental health provider than a foreign-born Asian American. And then other research out there indicates that a small percentage of Asian Americans might actually overutilize mental health services. So research indicates that the more cultured and the greater, greater the English language proficiency is, the higher the likelihood of seeking mental health services is. Um, at the individual level, level, we see barriers to seeking professional help that may include the lack of knowledge or exposure to Western mental health treatment, misconceptions about professional counseling, immigration history, length of stay in the U.S., levels of acculturation, gender, history of previous treatment, limited language proficiency, and client counselor ethnic matching. At the socio-cultural level, we might see barriers related to cultural values and views of mental health, um, the notion of shame or loss of face, expression of distress, 
stigmatization of persons with mental illness and mental health services, um, using mental health services, the availability of alternative healing practices, and seeking professional counseling may be seen as breaking away from and going against the privacy of the family. Um, within Asian cultures, we see the mind and body are considered, considered inseparable. So psychopathology is often conceptualized within physical and spiritual frameworks. So it's once again, not uncommon to see Asian Americans presenting with more physical symptoms like headaches, dizziness, when they're emotionally distressed. South Asians, Southeast Asians, and East Asians may believe that problems are preordained, a result of past lives, um, karmic, caused by supernatural forces, or an imbalance between the yin and the yang. And then at the structural level or institutional level, we see a conflict between the values endorsed by Western mental health systems and Asian values um, that might be more of a major deter deterrent to seeking professional help. So Western approaches often focus on self-disclosure, personal, highly intense issues and feelings. They're more insight-oriented approaches, and it's more about individual goals. Um, Perceived counselor credibility was strongly related to utilization of services. So that's something else to keep in mind. Uh, lack of culturally sensitive and competent counselors does contribute to high dropout rates or reticence in seeking professional help. Um, inaccurate evaluations or misdiagnoses due to cultural biases, different social norms, or culturally incongruent scales may create significant difficulties in perceived credibility among Asian Americans. Uh, sites of resiliency, we have psychological and or physical spaces that help Asian Americans cope. So several sites of resiliency have been identified for Asian American communities, um, including the use of alternative forms of healing, a holistic emphasis on health and a spiritually guided life. So themes of fatalism, karma, and religion, nutrition, and then family and social community. So these would be important things to kind of bring into your um, counseling with these clients. Education about counseling and utility of mental health services is needed among less cultured Asian Americans. So counselors play an integral role in educating clients about the counseling process. I mean, we really should be educating all of our clients about the counseling process because if you really ask your clients, they we kind of make a lot of assumptions. They really don't know what counseling is about. Um, multicultural competence, so self-assessment before entering session is important for counselors. Counselors are encouraged to obtain training, attend workshops and presentations, and generally familiarize themselves with literature on this community. Um, counselors should reflect on socialization experiences with Asian Americans, assumptions and biases about this community, and the extent to which this may influence their work as counselors. When treating Asian American clients, understanding how counseling and the counseling process may be conceptualized within a cultural context plays a significant role in providing culturally sensitive therapy. Depending on acculturation level, um, they tend to be more differential to people in authority, uh, so like a counselor, and counselors are seen as experts. So we're already kind of seen as an expert, but within Asian American and Asian communities, they see this even more so because of the way they view the relationship. So there may be a tendency to expect a quick fix to the problem within this population. So once again, getting into that, educating the client about the counseling process piece. Um, talking about issues conf conflicts with some cultural values. So it's important to develop a relationship um, in a very trusting environment. Uh, types of client of counselor self-disclosure, so like strategies, um, intimate disclosure, that kind of thing can be helpful. Um, so for example, disclosing tangible ideas used in personal challenges similar to the client has been noticed noted to increase trust levels in client counselor relationships. Um, and initiating a discussion on potential counselor client differences can also assist with building a relationship with your Asian client, which once again, we want to do that with all of our clients, have that discussion about differences. <clears throat> um, it's important to align conceptual conceptualization of problem to multiple context in 
which the individual exists. So counselors should assess relative significance of various relationships, systems, and environments within the client's life. Um, counselors should recognize psychological significance of immigration. Asian Americans may not openly express strong emotions, so that's something else that we should keep in mind. Um, they may not publicly disclose personal and family issues that may bring shame on the family. Asian Americans typically prefer an authoritarian, more directive and structured approach to treatment. And because of significant roles of family um, within the client's life, family therapy might be an appropriate intervention to keep in mind. Okay, so to prevent stereotyping or overgeneralizing, um, it's essential to assess individual differences that exist within and across generations and ethnic groups. So specific needs and adjustment issues of American-born Asians can be quite different from foreign-born Asians. Uh, voluntary Asian immigrants' needs and adjustments can be different from non-voluntary immigrants or refugees from Asia. Um, so when working with a diverse Asian community, counselors should develop a range of treatment modalities, assess to determine if problem is individual, systemic, environmental, or a combination of these, which typically it's a combination. Um, they should be sensitive to cultural norm of placing family's needs before an individual's needs, and then factor alternative healing approaches into treatment. Um, guidelines for counseling clients of Asian descent. So we have word of mouth referrals play a significant role in Asian Americans seeking counseling. Um, perceived expertness in a counselor is often a function of reputation, evidence of specialized training, and behavioral evidence of proficiency and competency. Perceived trustworthiness includes factors of sincerity, openness, honesty, or lack of motivation for personal gain. So a counselor self counselor's self-disclosure um, is intrinsic to developing trust, so that can be really important with your relationship there. Engaging in advocacy and outreach and maintaining visibility in the community is also extremely important to develop credibility. In terms of social advocacy and social justice, it is important for counselors to engage in a constant process of raising their awareness about Asian Americans in different contexts, so like media work, that kind of thing. Um, understand how meanings of identity shift through different social locations, like race and gender and sort through their assumptions and stereotypes, so like the model minority stereotype, that kind of thing. Um, when using interventions, counselors should assess its impact not only on the individual, but also on the Asian American community. So that is it for this chapter.